Hey everyone, it's the Eclectic Candy Man. Today with a video on how to install a gas ball valve like this one onto an existing gas pipeline. And the reason that I want to install this is because this existing gas pipeline has a on and off valve on it that requires a wrench. And I'd rather have one that sits atop <clears throat> that I can use my hand because ultimately I'm going to be installing this gas line for the dryer. This is all for liquid propane or LP gas. And so what we'll do is we'll, this, you know, your installation will be um, maybe specific and have a little bit of a different application. But in this case, we're gonna use a male to male thread, put this on top. We'll be able to then take this on top of that. And then this will be nice because what we'll be able to do is leave this in the on position and only switch the gas on and off from this new gas bowel valve where it has this safety feature where after you've turned it off in order to turn it on you have to push it in and then turn it back so you can turn it off without pushing in but then you have to push in and turn it back on so pretty nice uh, i got this from lowe's we're also going to need just a few tools maybe uh, uh, an adjustable wrench I actually have a 7 8 and 1 inch wrench that will hold these uh, directly or if I need to tighten them down. I've got a uh, pipe joint uh, compound or pipe dope. This is uh, going to be important to seal the threads. And then the most important is probably this gas leak detection right here. And we'll use this to make sure that we don't have any gas leaks when the installation is done. With that, this job you do not, again, not want to do it. If you are uncomfortable with gas, call a qualified plumber. This is not something for the novice who just wants to try it out. Because again, if you install it incorrectly and have a gas leak, that is a bad, bad idea. This will help identify via bubbles. That's what the bubbles are on there. If I haven't tightened something down or gotten it sealed right, but really it's not worth being cheap on if you're not comfortable with this. This is with somebody who already knows what they're doing and they just want to see how it's done and what the end result looks like. So with that, let's go ahead and get this piece, um, get, the, get the threads cleaned up. So we'll get a rag here, make sure that we clean everything up and then get that uh, pipe dope on here. Get this tightened down into the existing gas line and uh, continue with our installation. All right, so just want to get the existing threads cleaned of any residual pipe dope. You don't want anything going down into that line. I'm just going to clean that off, get everything out of there, and make sure that it's nice and clean. Because if this part of the plumbing goes bad, then I do need to probably, in my particular case, would have to call a plumber because that's down in the floor. That's the existing iron pipe, and I'm not going to be cutting in to any uh, existing pipe uh, myself. So in that case, I would use a qualified plumber to do any sort of job like that. But in this case, we're not doing anything with this existing one other than cleaning it up and getting in good shape. All right, so for this installation, mine calls for a half inch to half inch MIP male to male adapter. MIP stands for male iron pipe. So this one is going to go right down in there and then we'll be able to connect the valve. So after the threads are cleaned, I'm going to go ahead and use that pipe dope. And we'll get that spread. Again, being careful not to get it on the inside of the pipe. If I do, I'll just wipe any residual. I want to keep that opening clean all right again good idea to have a rag around get a little messy all right we'll thread that down and if you for some reason had gotten the wrong size threads you could tell you would have obviously tested this first to make sure this would not it would not go down uh into the threads easily that would indicate that you had the wrong size you always 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 want to hold the existing fixture, plumbing fixture in place, do not torque that down with a, um, without holding this in place. 
This particular one happens to be a 7 8 so I'm going to go ahead and use a, a closed-in wrench just to make it a, a little bit easier for me. And we'll get this tightened down into that existing gas line valve. All right, there we go, nice and tight. And we'll check for leaks again once we've installed the entire gas line and turned the gas back on. And to help with that, I'm just gonna wipe away a little bit of that extra pipe dope so that when I add the gas leak detector, it will have the ability to see the bubbles a little more clearly. One other thing I also did on mine was there is a single Phillips head screw in this valve. The problem is the, the tag that comes on it, when you rip it off, there was residual. So I carefully have taken that off. There's a little spring here. I'm just going to barely going to remove anything. I'm just going to get that piece of paper off and out of the way, put it right back in and then it reassemble it and ensuring that I had the exact um, uh, area that I was in uh, as far as it being on or off. So in this case, that ball being right there, there we go. I'll tighten it down. I probably would have preferred a sticker so I didn't have to disassemble, but it's just the handle, it's no big deal. All right, that's back in. All right, and so I can go ahead and explain the way this is. That ball, when it's in position here, and it's perpendicular, that means the line is off. And again, when you, this is a safety valve, so when I push in and turn it, now the ball is out of the way, and you can see that's how the gas goes through. So the gas is always on when this is in line with the pipe itself. And then as I... Turn it off, back on, and there we go. And I can tell it's working much better without that piece of paper in there. Anyway, yours may not be like that. Maybe it just has a sticker and you don't have to do all that. All right, so let me get that pipe thread, uh, pipe dope on the next part and we'll tighten this down. All right, same thing there, get the threads saturated, clean up, rag, paper towel, this stuff. Reminds me of uh, working with um, caulk in the bathroom. It gets all over the place. I'm sure a professional plumber probably is much more surgical about doing this, but, uh, but you know, weekend warrior here. All right, we got the threads prepared. We're ready to screw this on. And we'll tighten it so we can get that orientation so it's user friendly here on the end. It'll begin by hand tightening it real nicely on there. And then once again, we need to hold those bottom fixtures in place so that we do not cause uh, an issue with any of the other parts of tightening or loosening. So what I'll do is go ahead and get that seven eighths inch wrench on the adapter. And then it's gonna be a little bit of back and forth on the valve itself, tightening it down. And using a little bit of a bigger adjustable wrench. And since I'm here in this tight area, I just don't have much room to work with for tightening. So I have to keep moving the wrench, but it's no problem. Remember, holding that bottom, looks like when we pop it around, it's going to be perfectly tight. Now, if you get into a situation where it's too, you don't want to over tighten it just to make it in the right spot. So in this case, it looks like I might not get it in that exact position. Yeah, it looks like that's about where it's going to be. And that's okay. That's tight. Just double check one more time, making sure. Yeah, that is tight right there. All right, so it's all right because it's still fine. I know how it works. So that's the off position. That's the on. Very nice. Works really well. That's great. All right, so happy I got that in there. All right, the next step, 
will be to install the gas line from the wall, or excuse me, from the dryer. And I just used one of these brass craft kits. I've used them before. Uh, one thing when I did dig into the notes uh, about this and the recommendation from the manufacturer, you really shouldn't um, install and uninstall these. They're kind of disposable like the, um, like you would think with a washer with the water lines. It's just not worth doing them over and over. So this kit is about $30, but it does have all the, and it even shows you right here, you know, if you have a shutoff valve and then which pieces to use that go to the dryers. This is exactly our setup. And um, we will uh, finish our installation. All right, from the gas line kit, there is this, um, what they call the uh, Safety Plus Automatic Gas Safety Valve because it actually has like a, a ball valve in it itself. Well, not a ball valve, but there's a safety valve inside of there. So this also has those half inch threads. So it will go directly. And this has the proper threads that fit right into a gas ball valve, as you can see. So that screws right in there. So same procedure. We need to use the pipe dope on this. Tighten this down, holding the valve, and then tightening this one down. So let's get to that. Start by hand tightening it. Again, if you've gotten all the right sizes for your pipe, which you have to, they will all start out you know, quite easily by hand, just as I had done there. All right, let's go ahead and get a grab on the valve and then the new safety valve adapter. I'm getting keep hearing me talk about why you want to hold this bottom piece because whatever piece is below it, because if you're not holding that in place, you can turn all of the pieces below and potentially loosen, re-loosen or over torque uh, something below that we've already installed. So it might seem obvious, but let me tell you, I've had installers come in before who were not plumbers that needed to remove this. So they just come in and remove the line, but they actually only loosen the line and they, they uh, loosened the entire system below it. And um, yeah, that's not good because <laughs> even when you shut it off, you still smell the gas. And that's not a good idea. All right, here we go. And it does indicate on the uh, this safety valve which way the gas goes, and it tells you that it's going up. And the next part really requires um, um, hooking up to your specific dryer, the gas line. So this is the flexible gas line. This is going to go on to here like that. One of the things that's important to note is we've been putting pipe dope or pipe sealant on all the male threads. But if you can see here, and here's a closer version of one, this is called a tapered thread. All right, these types of connections do not, do not use pipe dope or pipe sealant or pipe tape. They go into the line and these tapered fittings have a seal onto their own. So you would not put pipe dope on a connection like that. You would just tighten the two down and it creates the seal with the tapered thread. So on this next connection, when the dryer is finally hooked up and we hook this line to right here, we will not use pipe dope on that. On the gas end of the dryer, we use this couple coupler that came with the gas kit that has the tapered ends, which the gas line will go into. So we're gonna put pipe dope on the male threads, put this on right here, just like that. Again, we can hold this tight so that we can tighten this down. And then our gas line goes from this connector to this connector right here.
All right, now we'll screw on our adapter, hand tighten, and again, as I've been mentioning multiple times, you have to <clears throat> secure both ends of what you're going to be tightening down. In this case, there's enough that this uh, adjustable wrench could bite into. And now I will use my adjustable wrenches on this as well. Now you want to tighten, but not over tighten because again, we'll check for leaks. So if we were too loose, we'll tighten it up, turn off the gas and tighten it up. There we go. It should be nice and tight. As always, I like to wipe off the access so that when we get to testing for leaks, we'll be able to see a little bit easier. My rags are getting saturated with the pipe dope. So have a few handy. All right, now that we got that all cleaned up, it is time to install the gas line. All right, now we're in a little tight quarters behind the dryer, and we're gonna go ahead. This this new line is really nice. It's You can bend it any way you need to, so you can get it exactly in the position that you want, so it doesn't put any stress on the lines. Let's see if I can get down in here. There we go. Hand tighten, nice and smooth. All right, remember, these are the tapered uh, flare threads, so we do not want to put any pipe dope on these. We need to get a hold of both the existing line that we just, in, or adapter we just installed on the dryer and our new line. We need to tighten these up. Get it nice. Make a nice seal on that. There we go. That's the dryer side. All right, now it's time to do the gas valve side. Finish this up. Very nice, it's got that loose nut on it. There we go. So we can hold that, get it threaded, placing no pressure. Uh, that's why I'm holding the line here. All right, supporting adapter below. Tighten down on this. And when tighten it down, there we have it. All right. So that's our last connection. Now the last part is to go ahead and open up the original valve because we're going to keep that open permanently, as I mentioned. That's the advantage of having this right here. This is in the off position. I do have another video on how to open and close that type of valve, and a, you all you need is a wrench. So I'm going to use a smaller wrench, and again, I have another video on how to do that. It's a quarter turn only, and there is a nut on the other side that can be loosened to help with this. All right, so I'm going to loosen the back nut couple of turns there, make it easier to open this back up and we're going to turn it one quarter of a turn counterclockwise, nice and easy, there we go, it's in line, so that means it's on, and then I'm going to tighten the uh, back nut um, back just to make sure, keep it in place here. There we go. All right, so now at this point, we have the gas is all the way up here to our new valve. So we can go ahead and turn that on using the safety feature turned on. And now we have gas in the entire line. All right, so as mentioned, the, the liquid propane or uh, natural gas providers typically put an additive in it that will make it smell really badly. Um, you would know pretty quickly just by the nose if you had a big leak. You would either hear it if you're quiet, you'd hear a little hiss, or you would smell it if you have a large leak. But what we're going to do is use that gas leak detection on every single joint, including at the dryer, 
and we're going to figure out if we have any leaks. And by the way, quick shout out to all of my craftsmen uh, made in the USA tools I've been using in this video. I have a lot of videos on craftsmen tools, so if you enjoy that kind of thing, check those out as well. Please like and subscribe and check out the other content I have on the channel. So back at it, this solution here, we're going to just liberally start applying it all over the joints and see if we see any bubbles anywhere. All right, and so far, I am not seeing any bubbles. I'm looking, you have to look very closely at this. And you also want to make sure that you can get on that back side, which the video is not showing, but I do have it back there. And be careful because you don't want to be confused. I'm actually creating bubbles as soon as it comes out by squeezing air. So you want to get plenty on there. What you're looking for is not bubbles from the actual, <laughs> from squeezing the bottle. You want to look for bubbles that are continually coming out. That indicates that gas is coming out of the line. And right now I'm looking at all my connections. I do not see any bubbles. That's a great indicator. You can even put it on here if you want to make sure the original line isn't spewing anything. And again, I don't smell anything. I don't see anything. So we're in great shape. Also going to go ahead and put it on these connections here. I put a rag underneath. Also smelling for anything. It's kind of a two-part test. You want to smell and you want to see if you have any bubbles. And I, I go, um, you know, use this stuff liberally on the joints. Check for bubbles. Do you have any bubbles? That means something wasn't tight enough. And again, we didn't want to over tighten because we could have always gone back, but it looks like we got the right balance there with the pipe dope and the tightening of our threads. One last thing on this installation as well, if you cannot feel comfortable with the gas leak detection solution or you continue to smell any kind of gas, uh, just go ahead and call a qualified plumber, gas plumber that can take a look at it for you. Uh, there's no use messing around with something like this if you are unsure about it. So make sure it's completely leak free and operational and if it's not and you still having issues there might be a larger issue at hand maybe with the original plumbing or such so please call a qualified plumber all right there you have it we've got our new gas ball valve installed with our brass craft gas line that goes up to our dryer we check for leaks we use the pipe dope we tightened everything down now we've got a really nice setup so if we need to turn off gas to the dryer we can immediately just turn it off right here, turn it back on. you got the safety valve, really smooth operation, nice and easy. A lot easier than going to have to find a wrench. It's a lot safer too because it's a quick way to turn off the gas at the appliance if there was any issue. I hope this helped. This is the Eclectic Candyman. Until next time, we'll see you later.